Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Bloody Good Horror. My name's Eric, and I'll be your host for this evening, where we will be reviewing Love Lies Bleeding. We'll get to top ten this later, but it's definitely officially the horniest movie of the year, which, <laughs> two thumbs up for me. <laughs> Joining me tonight, first up from Manhattan, New York City, he's in dark mode tonight, with mm-hmm. a black shirt. Please welcome John to the show. Yo, yo. Dark Schnars, my favorite Dark Schnars, yes. Just gearing up for Horror Hound Weekend. Mm-hmm. Next up from Indiana, please welcome Casey. Hello. And last up tonight, from the Bay Area of San Francisco, please welcome Rachel back to the show. Yes, I'm ready to talk horny movies. <laughs> Actually, John, this is all, you've been punked. This is all an elaborate ruse uh, by Rachel and I. We have tricked you here tonight to talk about one thing only, and that is Kate Middleton and whether or not she's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> we Listen, can get into it. I what? am a true There's new thing. evidence. My mm-hmm. wife is keeping me fairly up to date on what's trans. I mean, you know, I read some things on the internet too, so uh, it's so wild. What's your verdict, John? It's wild. Something's happening. Like she's <laughs> not fine. She's not fine. I think she's that's clearly safe to say. not fine. Not fine. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. The the thing that I was surprised about was the like affair with the Charlotte or whatever her names. Some, the she's Lady like, Danbury or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who Isn't looks exactly news, like Kate Middleton? I mean, I don't know. Did, that hit my radar time. this week. So he does have a type. I mean, did she, you whoever see the that body woman was, the, the, the affair woman, like <laughs> it's she has the silliest British title. Yeah, you could possibly imagine. Like it looks fake when you look yeah. at it. I saw a meme that said it's. It looked sounded like somebody trying to pronounce Matthew McConaughey with a mouthful of marbles. <laughs> Uh, I do want to talk about the body double later, Rachel. We should come back to that because we do have official business this evening. Uh, is that is, talk, is that reviewing so, the movie reviewing that we movie. said we were coming here to review? Yeah. That, so, okay, that tracks. Let's take a quick break and talk about Love Lies Bleeding. This is it, Jennifer. Your big break in TV. Ah! About the front time. I uh, I don't think I realized you were wearing shorts. Me? Yeah. Yeah. I I get real hot and sweaty during the show, John. So I'd like to wear shorts. <laughs> since you demanded an answer on why. That was all right. That's a revelation. We're right about there. to room together this weekend. You're gonna see a lot more than me in shorts, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I'm gonna get excited. Let's go. <laughs> I don't want to brag, but I've been working out, John. So <laughs> this know. is for the cool. very elite class of Patreon. <laughs> <Yes>. Yo, <laughs> the you webcam. Slip, you slip me a couple dollars, too. and uh, you can get in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, I shouldn't put that thought in John's head because what's going to happen is he's going to go out and get just blackout drunk on probably Friday or Saturday night. <laughs> he could <laughs> potentially invite people back. No, come on, I'm not crazy <laughs> i'm here yeah. party in eric's room i heard he has a lot of snacks <laughs> there are a lot of snacks in his suitcase <laughs> that i would be more if likely to drunk sleep people back with the promise of the snacks that will be in my suitcase you will see the most disappointed people ever <laughs> i'm more likely wing? to sleep in a public setting than i am to bring people back to our room that is like it's fair no no yeah so he, he's right, not marked 20 years ago <laughs> no but i have casey and i have seen john go to the abyss and it's you think of john as like this buttoned up business new york city like mm-hmm. he is a wild animal uh, just waiting to be uncaged is all i'm gonna say as i was explaining to rachel people drink in new york city you might not have realized that it's they do sell alcohol yeah but so. listen when i grew up john i hung out <laughs> with a lot of degenerates and did a lot of drinking with them. Mm-hmm. I know that look that you get in your eyes is all I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. there's darkness inside of Bushnars. <laughs> well, I mean, he's like halfway to Saltburn, so. <laughs> uh, all right, we're just getting I, Rachel like. Really I kid, I kid. Right all right, John. Let's uh, please please bring us the word of the day. Eric, today's word is entomologist. Entomologist. Have you never done that one? 
I, apparently not, because I did check this several times. E n t o m o l o g i s t entomologist. A person who studies or is an expert in the branch of zoology concerned with insects. Bugs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm oh, not dude, seeing... Every, you know what's so funny? Every other crazy thing in this movie, I literally forgot that whole subplot. Something yeah. about. Yeah, there's, a, yeah. There's, there's some of that going on. Um, <laughs> entomologist. I don't know. There's not... It, let's, just, let's say it's from the Latin, because uh, I don't see... There's not a... Uh, you don't get to just say that here. if it's not true. Well, I, I'm on the page I'm on. I don't have it, and so uh, we're just gonna we're gonna move on. Entomologist <laughs> Ed Harris. We need we need someone to study what's going on with Ed Harris's hair. His movie. hair. Oh my hey. god, <laughs> that was a decision. Hey, now, if we're still recording this show in 20 years. <laughs> I was going to say, Casey, you have much more yeah. coverage up there than Ed well, Harris does. And did you For see there was, there, was a, there was a moment where there's, I think it's when they're in the um, the sister's house and there's a picture of him, Ed Harris, like younger. And oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's Casey. Yeah. It was, I mean, that is a true skullet in the sense that oh, yeah. like, it's yeah. fully oh. bald up top and then he's got hair like down halfway down his back. It is, it's pretty it's glorious. Incredible. Yes. <laughs> incredible. Uh, John, John, tell us about Love Lies Bleeding. Yes, uh, Love Lives Bleeding. Uh, this is a new film. It's a, I don't know about you guys, but it, so this is an A24 release. There was like yeah, six A24 previews. That was like all I got before my thing. And I don't know. Some of them I'm just like, I, like what are they? What's going on? Here? I don't know if this is Kuth John, but I sit on my phone during previews because I don't want to see him and I'm bored. Yeah, no, yeah. That's fair. Um, but so this comes to us from Rose Glass. I think we discussed this maybe last week, but Rose Glass, uh, director of Saint Maud. Um, she, I, I think this is just the detail. second feature. I think everything else Correct. she's done, yeah, was was a short. Um, yeah, so Saint Maud was uh, 2019. We, I feel like we covered it in like, or maybe it was released in 20. We like covered it the year it came out. I'm pretty sure, but it we did it Saint seems Maud, like yeah. it's more recent than than 2019 um time is a flat circle <laughs> <laughs> well what and look time? those those it's were three dilation. uh those were three covid years uh in yeah. there so i mean it's like yeah. What the hell? Yeah. um but yeah it, this stars Kristen stewart uh and a young woman uh whose name i am currently looking up katie named- o'brien katie o'brien yeah uh that's they play lou and jackie lou is sort of a I don't know, down on down and out. Like she's not down on her luck necessarily. She's like sort of like choosing to be somewhat down down and out and living in I don't know that they give us a town name, but it's somewhere in New Mexico, uh fairly she's close a, to the border. She's a drifter a little bit. Well, no, she's never left the town. I mean, this is the thing. Oh, she's you're not, talking about you're talking yes, about Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Lou is living in town. She's running a gym. Uh and then Katie is the drifter. So she has sort of run away from home. Uh she was adopted, I think. Does she mm-hmm. say she was adopted? Yeah. So yeah. she was she was adopted. She was like living in a in a home, um, and she has run away. She's made her way to New Mexico. She is en route to Las Vegas, where she is going to compete in the a world bodybuilding competition, um, and that is when she encounters Lou at this gym, and and they sort of like fall Go right head away over. is like. You want some steroids? Because she, well, <laughs> they fall head over heels in love very quickly, uh, and and but but a big part of their relationship is that Lou, sort of in in hopes of like encouraging her to be successful in this bodybuilding competition, offers her steroids, which you know are sort of like all over this gym. It's it's like a, I don't know. The gym looks interesting. It's sort of like a meathead gym. Uh, it's a little, oh, it's, like, a, it's a glorious rustic. 1980s gym. There's like yeah. carpet, there's wood paneling. It's just, we should have mentioned this movie is set in, I don't know. They, they, again, they don't give the exact, there's a couple of like, uh, newsreel clips that you could probably date it pretty exactly into some time, it, you know, mid eighties, let's say it's sort of like mid Reagan era. Yeah. Well, um, I've seen it mentioned about it yet. Like Wikipedia, it was, I think it is officially 89, but it is not mentioned. Oh. Interesting. In the, so it's like movie. the very yeah. end. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, like, like I said, I mean, there were. I think there's like at one point you can hear them discussing the the collapse of the USSR, 
like there's another Reagan bit you can hear where he's talking about like a specific drug bust or something that went on. You know, mm -hmm. like there was these like very specific details. In any event, um, they have they've this like sort of torrid love affair. Um, but unfortunately, Lou is from a fairly shady family. Her father runs the local gun range. Her father, Ed Harris. Ed Harris, Bugs. the Scullet, he of Scullet. Um, <laughs> he he of Scullet. He is also running guns. He's sort of like illegally trading in guns. And so he, he's got this like whole crime network that also involves like a guy on the police force who he pays Very off. Very small and... town. Like he, he's juiced in with everyone. Yeah. The other main plot point that's very important is that uh, Jenna Malone plays Lou's sister. I Kristen. literally keep forgetting she's in this movie. There's so many good actors in this movie. So she plays Kristen Stewart's sister, who is married to Dave. Dave Franco. Franco, oh, yeah. who also has like an amazing hair situation. In the role he was born play. to play. Seriously. <laughs> Un I mean, unfortunately for Dave Franco, yes. Yeah. But <laughs> it's not it's good. Easy wife beater, and he nails it to a degree that is alarming. So this is like. Lou, like the at the center of Lou's character, like there's this question of like why did she stay in this town, and she basically hangs it on the fact that she's there to sort mm. of protect her sister who is being just like fairly mercilessly abused by her husband. Um, so yeah, you don't understand love, John. You just don't understand love. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> We can get into that this weekend, but uh, <laughs> right and like and so really, truly like this drifter. What's her name? Jack, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. Like, it's essentially her arrival that tips off this whole like Rube Goldberg machine of bad shit happening. Really, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily her fault, but it's like she is the domino that starts a bunch of things that then well, ends up in this big. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, by, the end of it. Mm. by domino, you mean a face smashing <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, but like, remember, she hooks up with Dave Franco. So like, there's a weird mm -hmm. thing there. And that creates mm -hmm. the weirdness. Like, even that mm -hmm. stuff in a way yeah. is that was already happening. But that's fair. But the, right. the, the I, two of them meeting <laughs> was what I'm saying is this catalyst for like you you're blowing. you're bringing up like i think a somewhat contentious point we, we're like too deep in already we, uh, we're, not, we're not starting where we <laughs> okay start. john okay all right let's pull let's, up pull uh, up uh rachel <laughs> rachel what do you think so i absolutely love this movie i think from the casting to the performances the style the story the score and of course the sex we're gonna need to talk about the sex i'm sure it has this sort of like trashy sweaty aesthetic that almost feels like a summer night i don't know i just Dude, i love everyone needed a shower <laughs> yeah i don't know i was getting like a it was the a 80s, pheromone I mean, vibe <laughs> <laughs> pungent yeah mm, musk but yeah i don't know i think this movie is disruptive to normative like as disruptive to normativity as you could possibly get it's just like punk and transgressive and utterly unburdened yeah. by the yoke of morality in a way that i found deeply deeply cathartic i'm not mm. that surprised because i've seen what rose glass does and she even though St. Maud was very, very different, very, very different. There is like this core that is like a celebration of bad women doing bad things, but exploring it with like a ton of empathy. And it's just fucking cool, man. It's sexy. And like, I think it, it, it pulls in all of these interesting ideas and we get into the magical realism of, I'm sure we're going to get into that. But yeah, I don't know. I just really have nothing but positive things to say about this movie. Casey. I, I came into this uh, completely blind. Um, <clears throat> I hadn't seen the trailer or anything. I knew Kristen Stewart was in it, and I knew Rachel talked about Katie O'Brien being in it uh, last week. So I had no idea what I was getting into. I was pretty wrapped up in this movie from the beginning more than anything. The pacing of this movie, I think, is just like kind of spot on. And it's un we're getting this kind of just story of these random people where everything goes wrong and watching it uh, slowly unfold and i think it's paced really well to really grip you in and i mean the whole thing the acting and everything just really kind of pulls you in from the beginning to where when the weird kind of fantasy weird stuff starts happening it's jarring but at the same time you've already been lulled into this story and gone, gone along with them and so brought in you're just like well I guess it is what it is, and you keep going. It doesn't really throw you off the vibe. 
So I'm really impressed with how it all kind of flowed together because it is kind of a punk rock movie. It's not a typical structure. The fantasy stuff is really what stands out to me. There's those great scenes where uh, Jackie was getting mad after taking shots and stuff, and you would start to see those close-up shots of her muscles growing. I thought were just as they're popped in there throughout. Uh, that's the punk rock vibe I'm talking about. With the about. sound just, effect of like yeah, wrenching. it's just yeah. crazy, and then. Rachel and I were talking last night. There's things going on with perspective in here that are snuck in here that once you look back on it and you get to the end of this and look back at scenes from the beginning, you're like, oh, crap. It really makes me want to watch it again. So, oh, yeah. yeah. I really enjoyed this a lot. I thought it was a great story. And it, it was fun to see. And not in it's like a horny way, but it was fun to see women beating nasty people, too. Or, but not know. not in a horny way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm just saying my focus wasn't on that. <laughs> Man was agree to disagree. John, uh... I, like what? There were several scenes where I, that was your focus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not knocking those scenes. I'm just saying I'm thinking beyond that. <laughs> We're just enjoying um, making you uncomfortable, Casey. That's I know, what, John. What do you think? That's what I'm here for. Yeah, I mean, I I really really like this movie a lot as well. Um, I mean, but the, I also feel like this movie is like made for me. Like I'm like, I like, I'm very squarely in the, you know, the, the demo, not even just the demo. Like I, I like films that are challenging. I mean, Rachel, I thought the, the fact that you called this like challenging to, to normative sort of society, like I hadn't necessarily thought of it that way, but I, I think you're right. I, I I would take the other side of that only to say that like at its core when you know when you walk away from the movie like it's a it's a romance like I was trying to mm-hmm. one of the questions I was trying to answer for myself is like what because we talked about should we actually be covering this last week and Rachel you were like I oh, don't worry there's enough darkness it's totally fine agreed like and it does I mean and also the fact that she directed St. Maud like that's like a blanket pass um but it, I mean, what is this? It's like a noir thriller, but then, you know, I would make the argument that it's, it's a romance, like at its very mm-hmm. center. And like it, what it leaves you with is it, you are it, when I say it's a romance at its center, it like ends the way a romance ends, you know, like it follows the romantic genre tropes to the end. I mean, you know, they, I don't know. I don't want to, spo- I mean, we can, we spoil all the time, whatever. They they end up together, like, for better or worse, right? But there is that little coda <laughs> that well, I think is disruptive to, to like, a right off into the sunset kind of vibe. Like, because the vibe not... is that you leave things behind, but instead no, but that's the point about by the cyclical nature of the violence. But the, they're but that's fucked. the point like, about the morality thing. They're alive. like, <laughs> right, right. It, you know what it is? It's like, it's shades of, I mean, di- totally different movie, but it's shades of, like, natural born killers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you root sure. for those people in that movie, even though they're doing objectively awful things, right? Yeah, they're not. So Kristen Stewart, this I mean, we don't we can get into it later, but I I loved it and I loved the how it problematic each of the characters are in their own way. Some I, someone was saying like the fact that I think Eric, you said when Katie shows up, that's sort of like the the impetus to all this stuff happening. I actually feel like Kristen Stewart is the impetus because if she doesn't give her those steroids, like none well, of this totally. stuff goes yes, of down course. this yeah. this path, For sure. you know, or or yeah, maybe this, some this, version of it happens. The but steroid it's not the thing, but again, you could argue like if this she never comes in a town, who's she giving? Sure, she well, has no, no, to totally. be there to but get the But yes, steroids. you're right yeah. because that yeah. ends up being the thing that rages her out, that makes her do what she does later. That then is where everything like really spirals out, right, and makes her go basically. She's into like psychosis at some point. Uh, yes, um, I mean, well, go ahead. Sorry, there's some stuff I want to get into. But no, we, I was gonna I say like, I'm with you yeah. guys. This this movie is absolutely fantastic. It has such a style to it, such a great cast. Like Ed Harris is kind of a side character in it, but he is that freaking hair. The I mean, old man Ed Harris <laughs> eating bugs. But it's yeah. really about Kristen Stewart and this other actress whose name. Is, it's Katie, Katie O'Brien. O'Brien. Katie O'Brien. It's okay. I'll remember. You I can be in charge of everything Katie buddy. O'Brien. <laughs> there, I've, I've grown to really uh, appreciate Kristen Stewart as an actress, um, I think especially after this. 
And the two of them have such good chemistry. And that's really where the, like, I, I agree kind of what you're saying, John, like the meat of the movie is in this relationship. It's so well drawn as essentially like, they're two extremely different kind of people, right? But they're both like emotionally stunted, broken people whose parts happen to fit together in a way that's like real explosive, right? I mean, that mm -hmm. the whole yeah. thing of the movie is the way that like those kind of relationships are like all chemistry and lead you to making just fucking terrible decisions, right? Like if you're <laughs> like, it's like when you have those conversations about like, yeah, I would hide, like the debt, would you hide a dead body for me conversation, right? Like. That's literally like the whole premise of this movie played out to like the most absurd degree possible, right? Um, and it even it's interesting because that's even like the crux of their confrontation at the end is like how far are they really willing to go for each other? And then that movie makes that decision of like all the way. We're just gonna take this all like way? again mm, all the yeah. way. But what it leads to in the meantime is like just you feel this insane chemistry between them. It's a very um saucy film like it's real graphic and gets like really shows you like what this relationship is like but i also just think like like it's just so well thought out who those two characters are what happens when they run into each other and you do root for them because it's also kind of sweet even though it like completely goes off the rails at some point right like mm -hmm. when they're in the gym together alone the first day they meet like you're rooting for them to get together you know what i mean like there's, they have this very like tender, sweet moment together after they fight off those dudes or whatever. Um, it's so tense. Like when she is goes back to the house to clean up, that whole scene is crazy tense. And then Ed Harris comes in. Like there's just lots of great moments like that throughout the film. I love the setting, this like southwestern setting. It's one of those films that just has such a distinct feeling time and place to it it really puts you there and part of that is what you're talking about rachel of everybody's sweaty and dirty yes. like everyone is yeah. filthy yeah. um so again and yeah Say so it it's again, like a slower. very it's a, the, <laughs> the whole film is a very visceral experience is what i would say um mm -hmm. it's yeah, almost like it. a uh it felt like eight early 80s new york city grimy basket case grimy to an extent right yeah, there's but a more stylized to it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except for it doesn't make you want to take a shower. <laughs> oh, man. And then there's a, this other woman who, like, is obsessed with Kristen Stewart. And Kristen Daisy. Stewart just has to bang her once in a while to, like, Daisy get her to, so to leave sad. her alone or whatever. Yeah. So I mean, sad. That actress Daisy. is so good. Like, the way she rides the line in some of those scenes of, like, maybe she does kind of get that she's, like, blackmailing oh, yeah. her a little bit but she's oh, playing yeah. it off so well and like down the line mm -hmm. it's so so interesting that character is embodied it's like her physical yeah. performance like when yeah. they're at the breakfast and she's like oh all yeah, of those that little breakfast scenes. like the teeth her that teeth was i was that's what perfect. i was gonna say her teeth yeah. well i mean i assume she's not she's like a legit like drug addict i mean there's like she's doing She's doing like harder stuff than you mean in real cigarettes. life or in the movie? <laughs> no, in the movie. <laughs> oh yeah, I genuinely didn't know what she that meant. poor woman. No. <laughs> She's I, now been typecast. Also, and like, dude, Dave Franco. I, I mean, I always liked him, but you don't really think of him as a person. Oh, he's, he's with a lot of range. He's awesome. <laughs> like, yeah, but he I actually like, is. He, but he's actually unsettling and scary in moments. Too, I feel like he's hasn't he done a scumbag role before? I thought he's done at least. I one. think he's done what at least he? one. Was he in like Spring Breakers or was that the other Franco? No, that's the the brother. That's that's James okay. Franco. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the one who's actually a creeper. Yeah, he I mean, was in one of those. Uh, oh, I can't think of it now. It was a Seth Rogen movie with the frat butt house next door. Neighbors, neighbors yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he does like smarmy prick really good, but this is different. This is like yeah. dirty white trash. It's just uh, it was good. It's yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, he's another one. He just kind of totally absorbed that character and you know turned into it there was like, no it's like it, it's it wasn't really dave franco playing a scumbag he was dave franco scumbag. from from the names all the way down to the bid players just like yeah unparalleled yeah. casting just perfect well, yeah. and i thought i i i guess i will credit the editor i felt like this thing was exceptionally tight it keeps um, moving. Yeah. there is not even the way they handled some of the exposition that this is one of those movies that sort of gives you less than you need most of the you know along the way and, and then sort of like 
confirms things for you rather mm-hmm. than explain yeah. shit to you and then like yeah. mm-hmm. let you watch it which it's a movie. This, is the the, other... this is it's just excellently done the, mm-hmm. a great example of like what i love about this movie is like again talking about it as a visceral thing like i feel like you can smell the scenes in this movie there's this scene okay so like the first night <laughs> which, that she stays which at the house did you want to smell it <laughs> Listen, so they 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 bang it out, right? <laughs> but that's not what I'm talking about. They go to sleep, they wake up in the morning, and Kristen Stewart starts making her breakfast, and she's be, kind of trying to be like, she's trying to have that daddy energy, right, Rachel? Like, she's like, yeah, mm-hmm. make your breakfast. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but then, like, this woman who's a bodybuilder tells her, like, oh, yeah, they're good, but, like, I like the egg yolks taken out. And then, first of all, as a person obsessed with eggs, this scene spoke to me. But second of all, <laughs> but then they go into a matters. montage where, like, and again, it, the point of this whole section is, like, look how fast these people with no boundaries become completely ingrained in one another's lives because they, they just hooked up and mm-hmm. the next morning we get a montage that essentially spans a week or whatever of now they just are live together and they're completely enmeshed. But we see that through eggs being cracked and her making breakfast every morning and cigarettes go. And what the brilliant shot is the garbage can as yeah. the garbage can fills up with egg yolks and cigarettes. And you're like, you can just, I can smell this fucking place. <laughs> like that is such brilliant, like tactile information that you're getting mm-hmm. about the world that these characters are inhabiting. Well, mm-hmm. to me, that's also like, that's what I, the, like you talked about with the way they played with the passage of time is, what I think of when Schnars was talking about how this is edited and put together. It's they don't waste a lot of time on that passage of time. There's definitely passage of time, but at the same time, you're so into the story. You don't really give a and shit. And again, it's like if that, that <laughs> montage maybe spans a week. It might even yeah. been days or something, but they're just like basically married by the end of that day. Right. Yeah. Like, well, we know it's met. about a month, a month total, total because total, when she right. comes into town, she's like, I am going to this competition in a month. Right. Yeah, Which that's is, again, really like, the only yeah. indicator. You All have. of that is great context set up mm-hmm. for what you're about to see, and that the film does that in really economical ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would like to posit, and well, you too. I mean, I, I left the film thinking Kristen Stewart is is really an antihero. Like, yes, we are rooting for them. We're rooting for their relationship. I, I think you, it's it's left very ambiguous how like sort of out and out evil or just like bad she is. Mm -hmm. And until at least in my mind, they have this sequence where at the, you know, very near the end where she and her father are having this confrontation. And he basically like says like, you know, you're not like your mom, you're like me or something, whatever. It's something to that effect. Mm -hmm. And she has like fought that. And, and clearly that's like a big part of who she, meanwhile, what we've seen her do throughout the whole film, right? Very so, <laughs> yeah. Well, but what we've seen her do throughout the entire film is really like manipulate or not even manipulate, but like enable Katie or sort of like push Katie. Cause absent, I think it's safe to use the word enabling. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but I, I guess, and I can't remember somebody, somebody was making the point or like, I actually don't, Katie is like, in, at least in my mind, mostly a victim in this movie in, in so far no, as like totally i'm not well when i say it's more just like she's the agent of chaos because she's the new thing that gets introduced to the town that's not like a moral judgment i just i got questions on katie well here's the thing like she we know she's like doing whatever she needs to do to survive like she, she sleeps mm-hmm. with dave franco's character that's like the very first time we see her so like but she wasn't killing people she wasn't even using steroids, like she was like trying to like, really right. Be this, well, like, the, the, the giving her like, steroids, the first living thing under a meet. road. <laughs> you know, the, the like, steroids thing is quite clearly like the first big transgression that leads to like kind of everything else in a way. So they there, hint she, at there, something that the predates yes. her arrival in town. There, when she calls home and they exactly. tell her, "You're a monster. Never call here again." Something went down. I assume. I, so, but like, I, how do we know they're not just like a religious household where? they like didn't like it, want her around so the we other don't, thing that's is just thing. consider yeah. that like you're talking about a woman right from a potentially religious household like bodybuilding in the 1980s it could have literally just been that that they like 
were horrified mm. by that. I think her trauma response to what happens with J- J- James Frank or Dave Franco's character, or all of those kinds of things, mm. are to me mm. like subtle building blocks of like uh, but, evidence yeah. of past trauma. But I like, also, I think, yeah. yes, I also think the film is very clearly signaling roid rage is happening, right? Like, well, see, but. Because but I don't think that was do that shit, long it, enough for Roy Rage. No, no she dude, punches she, the guy outside. Dude, we're talking about like 1980s. Yeah, yeah, sure. but like before she makes that decision, though, that's when you start seeing th- th- those creative little shots that are showing us, like her. She is changing inside, like basically. That's where yeah. we see, like, well, we yeah, really see was... her. Like, I think that that. I think that to me, that's being suggested that that's the beginning of of the roids having that impact on her i mean i, I think she like has 1980s. a pre-existing penchant for violence because she that's, like she yeah, very quickly punches that guy in the face yeah before she fair. takes the steroids i, 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 I will well, well, stop that about but, dealing with that before i think that's a fair okay. assertion mm-hmm. but that's my point that what we're seeing is like so here's this person with this predisposition and here's this other person that's just enabling and being like here's steroids yeah no no i no, i was i agree yeah. i walk back the uh the the jackie but, yeah as but that's my larger point necessarily. about again it's like they're both bringing their own shit to it but together they're fucking water and or water they're like gas and a match basically mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah well I and the they're way- both anti-heroes in my opinion like in yeah. in sort of the legacy of something like bound like the it's a, which yeah. is like a previous sort of queer i think what john's noir. saying is though like yeah. we see Kristen stewart make much more calculated decisions in the film mm-hmm. whereas she jackie is much more ruled when she does make bad decisions it's much more like emotional outbursts versus well, like Kristen stewart is scheming. impulsive the, the mm-hmm. movie yeah, is also that. from Kristen stewart's perspective like we never we don't ever get the flashback memories from Jackie the way we get mm. them from Chris and Seward. Right. Like it is very much like whether or not, which I like because it leaves that character mysterious. There's two main characters, but Kristen Stewart is like the the main character. I, I yeah, would say, I you think know. Yeah, but I think the way that they leave their backstories and their histories, they only give us those really brief glimpses into that and keep it mysterious. Really highlights that coming together and going off like a ma- match, like Eric's talking about. That yeah. really makes that yeah. stand out even more. It is. I, it's her life. It's Kristen Stewart's life in New Mexico that that Jackie comes into. You know, it's like her yeah. sister, her brother-in-law, her father. You know, I mean, it's. I so I love the absurd comedy of sort of again. It's like all of it drawn out to the most Ill, crazy conclusion possible. Like obviously, the very last shot with the body that's meant to be just like purely funny. But yeah. even by like the time she's trying to hide the third body, you're like, the, it, it's very well. The funny. cat, the cat, like the cat l- licking the, the yeah. eyes <laughs> there, on the couch. like it's ridiculous oh, at some point with the amount of like crime scene cleaning up <laughs> she's doing. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she drug that body in a rug down the stairs at the front of her house in broad daylight. daylight. (laughs) The uh, roids for you. I'm I'm curious, Casey. You mentioned you didn't see the trailer, Eric and Rachel. Did you you all see it? Like I watched it. I I, this was like a trailer. trailer, I went like that. See the like last scene of the movie is like very prominent in the trailer. Oh, is it? It's it was like somewhat disorienting to me when it happened because then I'm like, wait a second, this movie's over. What's happening? And then yeah. that last um, scene to me is like very natural born killers. Like, yeah. Well, and that's like the trailer is a little misleading in that way because I yes. do think it sort of foregrounds that almost like natural born killer ish. Yeah, yeah. It like that more that vibe than, you know, what mm-hmm. the movie actually is in some ways. I actually love that trailer because I feel like it does do a good job of giving you a flavor of what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it, it makes you feel like you're getting something far more formulaic than you actually get. So yeah. you get the experience of being appropriately teased by the trailer without it ruining it. Like there's so many things I... and the way the sequence, like this thing plays with formula in ways that, you know, keep it very fresh and surprising. But the trailer mm. makes it appear far more f- formulaic than it actually ultimately is. I would is. say, too, like, this is a huge step up from St. Maud. And I know a lot of people love that movie. It was too bleak for me. But it's very well made. Like, it's a fascinating movie. But this thing is, like, leaps and bounds. Well, it's, I mean, that. it's probably 5x the budget. Yeah. That's, would that's be my great. guess. You know? just, I mean, it's, it's still like, not a it's, huge it's, budget, but it's bigger. To me, this this movie puts her on my radar as a director in a way that St. Maud. Didn't. Is so, Saint Maud did is Saint Maud an A twenty four movie? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Huh. Was it? Interesting. But it was yes. probably an acquisition. I don't know the date. Yeah, it was yeah. an acquisition. Yeah, and this, she won a bunch I just of remember finishing St. Maude and being yeah. like, yeah. okay, I want to jump off a bridge now. Well, that was cool. The, <laughs> can, I, can I run a, a comp by you guys? And I'm just curious. If the, like, the movie that this made me think of uh, was Drive. The, the Ryan Gosling, Nicholas Winding Refn. And like, mm -hmm. I say that in a couple different ways. Like, they're both sort of noir. This obviously is doing something. I mean, they're not doing exactly the same thing. They are different films, but they they have similar scope. They follow like somewhat similar uh, like narrative arcs of like mm -hmm. falling in love and like doing something. You know, now Drive is more normative, uh, heteronormative in its uh, fl flavoring. Indeed, and, like, <laughs> it is. It is. They're both highly stylized in like different ways. You know, mm -hmm. like this this goes gritty and sort of like smelly i guess for for eric but versus Musky. but but i also Musky. think from Musk a, a almost word, from like yeah. a from a business perspective like drive was a big hit i almost like i'm surprised i i think this should hit in a similar like i don't know why it this is maybe too transgressive to to like hit in the same way but casey didn't you say um, you had some middle-aged lady walk out or something uh, they, yeah, there was a couple uh, sitting in the row next to me, and I saw they were probably in their mid to late 60s, if I had to guess. And the wife got up in the middle and walked out, and I was waiting. Then it dawned on me like 20 minutes later, like she never came back. And sure enough, when the lights came up, she was long gone. <laughs> what this was is, the scene? What broke it made her? Two point it wasn't seven... even one of the sex seats or anything. Okay. It was not much going on. <laughs> it made okay. $2.7 in 1,300 theaters, which is the lowest amount of theaters in the top. 10 currently but yeah i mean it was it's like a fine it's not like a huge movie like they didn't i don't even know that they marketed this movie like oh, outside really? of, i mean the marketing has online, been so controversial did. oh really like, but like oh yeah like that jockstrap uh photo on the cover of rolling stone and then them uh, just put oh, out their this. cover story and the the photo shoot in the behind the scene like well i don't know maybe i'm in different circles on social media but like <laughs> I guess. the sapphics fair... are have i have a they have awoken <laughs> They are aware. Are they happy or unhappy? Oh, like, I mean, the, everybody's going to need new pants because everyone's pants are on fire right now. Like, it is the <laughs> hottest thing on the planet. But, like, is anyone seeing the movie? Because, it, it, you know. I don't it, know. Okay, I'm just saying but not... there's marketing. <laughs> yeah, fair. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's going to find its home on like um on VOD. I think maybe some people might feel shy to go see this movie because it oh. is pretty sexually explicit. Like I'm imagining people so, showing getting there and then getting to the stretching scene. Like that's going to be awkward for some Rachel, people in a public this, setting. This this was I mean I saw Poor Things by myself earlier in, in the year mm -hmm. in like a fairly crowded theater and that was like a little awkward. I think this was more like they I mean there's like some very intense uh, sex scenes in this movie. Um, what does it say I mean, about me that I didn't bat an eye? No, I well, mean, like, I, I wasn't I, like, I wasn't like, I don't like that. Like, I was like having a good time, but it's just, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't Hopefully know. Hopefully not as good as time as that guy in Florida. That's well, all I'm going to say. Oh, oh uh -oh. my God. That is so good. John, do you even know about this? No. Oh. Some guy in Florida was a <laughs> can't believe I have to say this out loud. Some guy in Florida went to see this movie. Uh, and I mean, I know where you're according going. According to the it's article, like... quote unquote, according to the article, like interview with someone who was in the theater, he, he quote unquote, jacked himself off to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Fell asleep and like on, he's in, it's in one of those like recliner theaters and in the little uh... armrest next to him, there's like a bottle of liquor and a pack of cigarettes. And he's fully passed out with his like pants down and he got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> like I saw the picture and I thought it was some Eastern Bloc country because it just oh. looked insane. And then it was like, no, it was, I mean, whatever. Just Florida. Florida. I mean, Shit. Eastern I had it's the Eastern one. Bloc of America. <laughs> 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 Let's be honest. Uh, I, if that only happens once while this movie's in theaters, I'll be somewhat surprised. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I did have I a know, moment. I, this in one of those scenes, I decided for not thinking about it recline i was wearing my big hoodie i had my hood up you know because and i set the recliner back in the middle of one of those scenes and then i'm sitting there thinking that looked really bad <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah i love the sex scenes i think that they're like unfortunately pretty radical because 
we don't typically see that degree of sort of Ninja Turtle sense. Yes, they were radical. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that too but i mean like you guys just watch saltburn and like there it's very rare to see like uh, like sapphic sexuality presented in that way in a way that is like both very graphic and like rooted in reality with reality being, yeah i mean that's it, a, that's the, the authenticity of it is what makes it mm-hmm. so powerful I think. yeah yeah and yeah. It, i'll be honest i'm not approved but it was more aggressive than i expected <laughs> that's what she said yeah (laughs) but again it's like it's not just that it's like sort of authentic to it's it's about the characters as well and Mm -hmm. what their personalities are kind of bringing to that dynamic it's so well oh yeah it's it's realistic to them yeah what's that rachel and the gays like g-a-z-g-a-y-s but also j-g-a-z-e like the gaze of it is really interesting Mm -hmm. like it 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 centers like uh female pleasure and desire in a way that does not it feels insidery in a way that Mm -hmm. typically we don't even when you go back and watch like something like bound you know this is like pre-transition there is a, a real sense of titillation to those things and they're hot and i'm not complaining but this feels different yeah, that was by a man, right? Like, well, no, or, but no, I... <laughs> complicated. <laughs> Who directed that movie? The Wachowskis, the Wachow- well, now okay, Wachowski yeah, sisters. Yes, yes so, of course. Yeah. Did they both transition? No. Mm-hmm. Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. That. Wow, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. The sisters. Wow. I gotta keep up with the Wachowski. Yeah. Situation. Did you see that new Matrix movie, John? It was great. <laughs> Which I, I don't know. I saw three of them. How many are there? There was a fourth Matrix film that came out during the pandemic. Oh no, I didn't see that. It's great. It's oh great. yeah, I forgot about that. All right, yeah. all right. Maybe I'll save that for the plane, Eric. <laughs> I'm actually movie. gonna rewatch Bound. <laughs> I think by the time I saw it, I was like twelve. Yes. So oh, <laughs> it's good. It's so good. It's so good. You're yeah, gonna love pants. it. I don't think I was enjoying it the way I was meant to enjoy it. Uh, no, I think you probably weren't. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, Jennifer Tilly. Jennifer Tilly. Mm. It's yeah. <laughs> Prime Jennifer Tilly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, anything else about? Love lies bleeding. Um, Ed, oh, so we didn't about... even mention that Ed Harris fully eats a bug. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Or, I that, or the incredible fifty foot woman of it all. Like yeah. yes, yes. yes. Yeah. the ending. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you were chosen for the magical realism. I, I well, mean, I like it. I feel like it makes it feel like it exists in the same universe as Saint Maud. You know, like there's some of the same effects when she's having sort of her breaks with reality. Like they look a lot like the godgasms yeah. from Saint Maud. But mm-hmm. then I, I actually love that last beat it's so strange and i think it's going to be divisive for people because it's like is it real it doesn't matter like it i think met like what it's saying metaphorically and the way that they feel is really wait it, it, what you mean when they're walking in the clouds that they're like the when they're walking like, or when she becomes enormous like yeah the, yeah yeah no, it's it, more of a power fantasy it, sort mm-hmm. of if you're asking literally. is it real like you're as like it's a ridiculous no. like that's the no, wrong you, i'm saying not, man, you, i feel I like you're that's not gonna that. make it divisive yeah yeah. But like the people who are like uh, whatever, they shouldn't watch the movie. Well, it is, it life. is. <laughs> I'm like, you've literally is, missed the point. It All is right, kind of reality, girl boss. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But to your point, though, it's reality and fourth wall breaking in a way that the rest yeah. of the film is not. Yeah. Because yeah. even the scene where we see her, and I'm I'm curious to take him the symbolism of it all, but when she goes to the bodybuilding show and then it ha- freaks out, and then we see her in essentially like a psych psychosis haze vomit up Kristen Stewart yeah. well, she's, she's first like she's at body. the like she's yeah. at the ledge like she's at the like crime scene like there's got to be something there in that scene about like codependency and enmeshment and like well, she comes yeah. from inside I mean of this her is and, like, literally lesbian enmeshment on steroids right, right exactly, <laughs> yeah. but again but even that moment she's on drugs right so there's a mm-hmm. hallucinatory aspect to it whereas this moment at the end it, it's much more like the film again, like kind of breaking that reality wall. So you do, yeah. it is silly, but the end of the movie is kind of silly. Like you gotta, it is a moment that I could see some people being like, mm. like you gotta run with it when it happens. But that's yeah. that's the romance ending in some ways, at yeah. least in my it's mind. It's a romantic right? ending, like, yeah. yeah. Sure. Like, I will well, say, I've so I've seen this twice 
Um, Ooh, I really would like to see it again. You know, so it, it, I listen. I highly recommend watching it a second time. I think I was I missed a lot the first time because I was like so dazzled by everything and also mm. not sure where it was going. So I think I, I missed a lot of stuff the first time through. What I caught the second time through was that that actual her changing size is something it, this seeded throughout the film. If you, I actually have some screenshots I can show you. But I when she kills JJ, there's a shot of her and she is normal sized and then she stands over the body and she's like yeah. 10 feet tall yeah. I, like I, I totally right missed the it table. the first time yeah I know. yes yeah. i totally yeah. missed it the first time so like knowing where it was going i caught the second time i was like wait 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 did i just see what i think i just saw and um i think that's smart like that it's, mm. it's you know like it's there when you go back through that like she has been seeding this idea so when it happens it's not completely out of nowhere yeah I think it's also fair. We hadn't really talked about Katie O'Brien herself, like performance wise here. This is, she's I, I was familiar with her from, she's been in a TV for a while. I was, she had a big part in uh, Z Nation, and I know there's another big sci fi show she was a part of. This was oh, the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Mandalorian. Duh. <laughs> no, but this was like her first leading role uh, in anything, and I well, thought she nailed it. I was kind of yeah. wondering, like, was she a bodybuilder turned yes. actor? She yeah. Was. Okay. No, so she that, was an actor who was a bodybuilder. Who just so got like, into it. Yeah. We just wrote a piece about this on Pride that like someone surfaced um her audition photo. Like there was a news story broke that they were looking for a bodybuilder to play this role, and she had like tagged them with a photo of her lifting weights. So nice. I mean, she yeah. there's that scene where they've got her on stage with what I assume are a bunch of legit bodybuilders, and like she hangs with them. Like it's impressive. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think. But, I think for being your first leading role in a movie like this that is so outside the norm, alongside a powerhouse like Kristen Stewart, I thought she did a great job mm -hmm. hanging throughout the entire movie. Yeah. Yep. I agree. She's amazing. She is a charisma mm -hmm. bomb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No I'm notes. excited to see what she does next. Yeah. Right. How do we follow this movie? Jeez. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sequel? Mm, I would watch. <laughs> I uh, mean, it's there. It's on the table. Well, mm -hmm. I texted Rachel last night. Tim Burton is working on an Attack of the 50-Foot Woman movie. Yes. Oh, I boy. think we already got a cast right there. Did y'all um, see them Beetlejuice photos today? The first photos from no. Beetlejuice? No. Oh, yeah. They're out that there. That movie's not going to be good. There's just no way. Oh, the buzz is like pretty solid. I don't know. Like, What was the last good movie Tim Burton made, John? Mm, yeah, I mean, that's, that's fair. Michael Keaton, though, he's like un yeah. unimpeachable. And Catherine mm. O'Hare. Mm. I'm Winona Ryder. Yeah. yeah. I right. love Winona Ryder. Jenna yeah. Ortega for five minutes, so, you know, she has to. <laughs> <laughs> Should I get fired from that movie? Um, would you recommend this, Casey? Yes. John? Yerp. Rachel? Hardest of yes. Take your mom, take your grandma, take your dad, and see it in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Same. All right. Let's take a quick break and do some fan mail. Send feedback to info at bloodygoodhorror.com or on Twitter using hashtag AskPGH. Join Patreon to get back episodes and much more. Patreon.com slash bloodygoodhorror. And we're back. John, is this in the running for my list here? <sighs> I, you know, I guess I'll allow it. I, I, I don't know. Show. Yeah, we'll yeah. We covered it. Body horror. We covered it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's there's there's darkness. There's darkness. There's dark. That jaw. Uh, oh I'm yeah, that's it, not for everyone. I'm putting it at number two. What, what's, um, what's it number one right oh uh lisa frankenstein, frankenstein. I, I think I'll, it gets, I'll take it I'll i think it. it gets the nod as the pure genre film i think i have to give it up for that yep if we're talking just purely which movie is better it might be love lies bleeding but i did really love lisa frankenstein so. you've got a uh, you know eight and a half months to think about it so that's all i do is think about my list john you got eight and a half months in like four movies. It's just women directors, just all the way down. <laughs> Rachel will have won. 
I don't know. Directed Night Swim. Then yeah, finally we'll have we'll we'll have achieved the feminist agenda will have been achieved. We can retire. <laughs> what's the, what's the name of that family that makes the movies? Do they, the the Adams, Adams family. family. Adams Do family. they have any movies this year? No, I mean, they're working on two right now, but I don't think either of them are coming this year. I don't know. I'm actually they're going to be on more deadly in like uh, three weeks. I will ask them for wow. you, John. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, Rachel. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> uh, John. <laughs> When, so people can watch a live stream of the show if they're a patron. Yeah, they can. Go to patreon.com slash Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, If not, you're hearing this on Friday. And if you're hearing it on Friday, John, there is new hi-fi out in the world. I actually haven't announced this anywhere yet. You announced it to Casey and I earlier over text. Well, that wasn't a public announcement, John. (laughs) It was just to you. Um, Yeah, I have a new EP out. Yeah, it's new to Rachel, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Check Rachel. It. I didn't mean to wow. cut you out. Check wow. it out on Spotify, HY-FY. Also, follow me while you're there. That's probably the most useful thing you could do is follow me. So you get new stuff when it comes out. I have to say it is in heavy rotation for all of my workout mixes. Your your music is like perfect workout music. There might be some good workout jams in this one, so you might get Excellent. excited. Excellent. Walking through the woods, listening to Hi-Fi. That's my vibe. Levi's excited, John. Okay. Oh, new hi-fi. Aw. He even spelled it right. There you go. Uh, nice. Uh, yeah. If you want, again, you can follow me on Spotify. Also, just Eric BGH on Instagram. That's where you can find info on that. Um, and, John, that same day, we are all traveling to Cincinnati. If you live in the Cincinnati area, there's still time. Yeah. Get your tickets. Oh, yeah. Uh they are no longer selling Saturday only tickets. They are selling only you have to buy the full weekend ticket. So we Did have been in horror hounds where only? they had to stop letting no. people in because of like fire codes. Yeah. Okay. Great. I look forward to COVID. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm be happy if I don't have COVID when I get there. So. <laughs> I know, just getting on a plane, like you're, fu- I'm fucked regardless. Yeah, like, I mean, are you yeah. gonna be? So you and John are flying together. Does that mean you will still be doing your thing where you just silently stare at the back of the seat in front of you, Eric, and, um, and probably, feel the germs? Probably, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be holding his hand though. So I am taking. Pre- I'm preemptively taking zinc and vitamin D, which is what I take. Nice. No, I'm trying not to get sick. Oh, nice. if you two walk out of this airport together when I pick you up and John's wearing a sun hat, I'm going to faint. I, I, think I, left, uh, I don't know if my sun How's hat the weather? is here in the city. How's the yeah, weather? It's looking pretty good, I think. Right now. I think Friday's going to be nice, and then Saturday's a little chillier. I was just looking. I think like 40, it'll range from like 45 to about 60. Oh, my delicate California constitution is not ready. Oh, no. <laughs> you guys Can think I, it's cold? Ugh. I'm in Can danger. Can I be honest with you, Rachel? 45 sounds heavenly to me right now. Yeah. Four, it's going to be 45? On that Saturday. Looks like, that looks like hey, overnight if that's low. Night. Like, yeah, but like. But it 60s, dude. I'm gonna be, it I'm gonna is be... 60 degrees in California, and I have long johns on. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> my clothes. Eric, did you get snow today? I heard it was snowing. Uh, yeah, I week. yeah I took a bath, John, because oh, my arm cute. is messed up and I'm trying to rehab it. But yeah, I, I came out and there was snow on the ground. And the snow? <laughs> well, no, my point being, I went and did something yeah. and came back and was like, there's snow on the ground. Like, what the fuck? So I didn't actually see it happen, but yes. What were you going to say, Rachel? I was say, hey, did you get acupuncture yet? I'm telling no. you, it's going no. to change your life. Yeah. It is exactly I'm, I what you need. am also a uh, proponent. Maybe like when I get back. You will feel relief immediately. So I learned, Rachel, uh, so I got acupuncture at a physical therapy office in mm-hmm. Maryland. They call it dry needling. It's it's the exact same thing because like acupuncture has whatever like connotations, I guess. New York State, it is not, they do not allow that to be part of the physical therapy regimen. Mm-hmm. So like state to mm-hmm. state, because, like, when I say, like, I was getting, like, insurance was paying for it for me when I was ah, in Maryland. big Western yep. medicine strikes again. <laughs> it's New but York seriously, State. seriously, it will, it will help you. Give it, a okay. th- give it some thought. Yeah, maybe when I get back from this trip. I'm just going to bring some needles in my bag and we'll figure it out. I have a out. cupping set. <laughs> we could cup your shoulder. Oh, up I won't do that. That freaks me out. <laughs> uh, the weird welts. I can't do that. That's yeah. Gross. Yeah. Uh, it's very, right. like, 
post-coitus octopus looking. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is all coitus with you tonight, isn't it? <laughs> it's hard to get out of that mode after you see this movie, John. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, info In my app, defense, Katie O'Brien. Info at bloodygoodhorror.com. Kaylin from Kissimmee says, I'm driving to South Carolina and listening to the Saltburn episode, and I am at a stoplight next to three churches with three graveyards while Casey reads the out loud the listener question, quote, whose fresh grave would you most want to bang, unquote. <laughs> and I feel like I need a shower or something, so thanks for that. <laughs> nice. I hope Thank I the listener. The churches. You know. Mm -hmm. um, okay, John. Okay. So you remember this movie, Pooh, Blood, and Honey? Yes. Which was when Winnie the Pooh went into public domain, they made this like trashy slasher about it. Mm -hmm. Presumably um, they had made it and were they were waiting. Show? I wasn't on the show. Oh, they had it made because it released like that. Yeah, that it came out the day like of. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, they are apparently doing this with a bunch of other um, IP that's like public domain, like Bambi yes. was one of them and stuff. Peter Pan. And mm -hmm. do you, can you guess what they're going to call it, John? They're gonna you call heard it, it earlier. They're going to call it the Pooniverse. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was something you all said as like a joke. No, no that's, no. that's really <laughs> bad. Oh, my God. What happened today? Hey, hey, okay. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah. It's it uh, 2025. We're getting Monsters Assemble, which is we're going to get some setup movies in between then and, you know, now. Um, oh, here. Yeah, I pulled the post. Prepare for Pooniverse, Monsters Assemble, an Avengers-style movie featuring characters from the Twisted Childhood universe that started the with Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Mm -hmm. Wait, <clears> but so for a 2025 release, the movie sees Pooh team up with Bambi, Tinkerbell, Pinocchio, Peter Pan, Tigger, Piglet, the Mad Hatter, and Sleepy mm. Beauty as they wreak havoc on survivors from their past films. Huh. Yeah. And as expected, quote, some of the villains also will not see eye to eye, which will allow for some carnage within the group. That's, that's extremely specific. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I don't have to see the movie now. Yeah. <laughs> have you watched the trailer for the new one yet, Eric? As I remember you actually enjoyed the first one. So did you watch the trailer for the second I one yet? I did enjoy that first one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I've not seen the trailer for the second one, though. So they got some money this time. Okay. The masks like, it. like move. They now they talk. Mm. Like Tigger talks at the end of the trailer. It actually looks, dare I say, kind of fun. Hell yeah. It okay. looks yeah, I'm like kind of in. I, don't I just know. enjoy the chaotic energy of what they're doing, honestly. Like I, so even if it's bad, I kind of appreciate it on some level. I mean, I mean it gives me Charles people. Band vibes. Like, I like the idea. Master. I, I really enjoy the idea of like subverting beloved childhood characters. Yeah. If so like I said, I talked to the producer slash the person who's playing Christopher Robin in the next movie. And we talked a little bit about <laughs> Christopher what? Robin. Yeah. <laughs> we talked a little bit about like kind of how these creatures well, that was are. The whole, wasn't that the whole plot, right? Is like Christopher Robin, like, isn't he in the he, first movie? Is like he remembered seeing them in the woods when he was a kid, but thought it wasn't real, and then like they come back or something. Well, he grew up, and then he had never come back and brought them food, so they starved and turned feral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this time we're gonna and get more into it. That's why they were it. mad when he came back with his girlfriend or whatever, right? Because right. he like mm -hmm. I because see, they were I starving. See. So, as someone who was very excited about the Alien Romulus trailer today, because you're hoping for more lore, I I can confirm that Blood and Honey will include much more lore. We're gonna find out how the where these creatures came from. Listen, I love lore. Yeah. So this is gonna be a lore heavy chapter. Um, and it, from what I understand, it is everything amped to, like like there's like sixty kills or something in this one. Okay, I'm sold. Uh, yeah. John, did you watch the Alien Romulus trailer? I did. I watched it. Not a ton. Not really showing much. No, it's like I mean, giving me the, it's giving me the boilerplate alien. How stuff, do we but... feel? Have we seen? I, I'm, I'm going to ask the question, and then you can be like, oh, "I can't believe you didn't know." Have we seen the facehuggers run around like that before? Yeah. yeah. In Alien, it's skitter. After it gets out, jumps out, it's like skittering around. I think. They're, yeah. I, think... I mean, I'm like they're but they're like they're definitely running, like aggressive. Like fucking, yeah. like, it's like you know no, the zombies I, in World in War Z. In aliens, aren't they like, like jumping and like? Yeah, like, yeah. When well, she's they, trapped in that room with it, it's like skittering all over the walls and shit. Mm, okay. 
We just haven't I seen actually, a pack like, of them running down a hall, but like yeah. it's not it's not breaking canon for them to be skittery. Okay. Somebody was saying in Slack today that like there will be nods to like the Prometheus mythos that like so I'm taking that to mean like in a new st- you know the way the new Star Wars movies sort of nodded at the prequels. I'm taking it to mean that like it's not going to be a part of the plot, but like that it, you're going to get nods if you've seen those movies. Well, which I, I read, love, which I'm happy yeah. about because I loved those two movies and wish we were getting a third one. Honestly, I read this takes place between Alien and Aliens. One and two, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that lends more credence to the main character being Ellen Ripley's child. I know that there's already a game, Alien Isolation, the scariest game ever made, but that focuses on Ellen Ripley's daughter. Oh, is that who that? Okay, people love that game. That game is amazing. It is yeah. terrifying. It was basically the first time I played it, it was just like me in a locker getting eaten by a Zorn- xenomorph. I can't over do again, so I too horror scared. games. I'm not. It's too real. It's too much. If I'm controlling the character, it's way too fucking scary. I can't do it. Mm. This one is real scary. <laughs> is that an old game? I've played an alien game, but it was like a long I time ago. I think I've seen VR mods of that no. game too. Oh, yeah. yeah I think it was 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. something like okay. that. No, it's There's not. a, a version of though. that. Where it's a mic, where if you have your microphone on, the alien can hear you breathe or any noises yeah. you make. Ugh. So when you're playing, you have to be totally silent. Like if you, if a jump scare <laughs> surprises you, he coming. That's cool. Uh-huh. I like that. I like uh-huh. that. Anyway, I'm pretty excited for that. Fed, Fede Alvarez, right? That's yeah. Doing that. All right, he's, which that's got me. Evil dead guy. Is that right? Oh, all right, Rachel. I, I, I have complicated feelings about him. I think the man knows how to craft a scare. So I'm in it's aliens. I'm in, but he, he's the evil dead guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah guy. He did the, did evil he dead. Do he's also the don't breathe evil... too. So did he, did he do the first one though? I thought he did the first one too. He did the first yeah. one. Don't breathe yeah. is great. He didn't do rise. Did he? Okay, good. Cause that, okay. That would no. Have... that was a, uh, like that. Irish that movie director. is, is kind of doo doo. Uh, okay, well, well, Casey, go ahead on threads. Let's move along here. All right. Uh, first one, we got a D point here uh, from Kalanot. Are there any horror movies, or any really, that you've seen that have changed your worldview for the better? As in, you came away from it seeing things differently from then on? I mean, lots of movies, I'm sure. Um,. I don't have an answer for this. I don't have like a, like a changed my worldview for the better. Like, how do you define worldview for the better? The movie, the horror movie that I saw that changed my like thinking about horror movies was, uh, uh, brain dead Peter Jackson, Mm. which like I had seen a lot of horror movies at that point. Like I was not like going into this, like I had never seen but I saw that movie and I was like, holy shit. Like there is a universe the out there. Oh, it, dude. Yeah, it's yeah. like there is shit going on. I gotta that was I don't know. That opened that expanded my worldview, I guess mm-hmm. I would say. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean it's not a it's not a horror movie. You could call it horror adjacent because it's a Matthew Lillard movie, but SLC Punk had like profound effects on me. Hmm. hmm. I mean, I think movies are empathy machines. Like, that's what yeah, they yeah. do. I, yeah. I'm having trouble thinking of something. Not a horror movie. I'm thinking of, like, historical films that recontextualize things for me. But, uh, I mean, I think I think one of the powers of horror is that it sneaks under your defenses. And it, like, it makes you live in and identify with people that you normally wouldn't because they're, like, your, they're your hero. They're your avatar. But I can't think of anything specific that like changed my worldview in the genre, other than I think just generally making me a more empathetic person by the nature of how they operate. Probably Alien Romulus, I think. You're right, <laughs> dude. All I can ever think of is Brian. The trailer for Alien Romulus. <laughs> um, Brian Cox calling um, Culkin Romulus in succession, like just shouting yeah. Romulus at him, like demeaningly. It's so good. <laughs> Yeah. No, I think you're right. I've never, I've never really understood the plight of the skittering face hugger before, but now, now I see it. <laughs> now I see it. Fede right. got you. <laughs> oh, it turns Fede. out we're the real monsters, not the face huggers. <laughs> we're the Next walking up. dead. <laughs> Next up, we got our good buddy Popcorn Dot Designs. Anyone have any gym or workout horror stories? I did high intensity interval training classes for a number of years and loved them, but I overdid it during my very first class and had to run to the bathroom to puke twenty minutes in. Fun. 
I mean, I three weeks ago pinched a nerve in my arm and haven't been able to work out my right side since. So getting old is fun. Now your left side is just getting jacked. I'm literally was joking with Mark today. I'm going to be like that dude in Lady in the Water who only works out the one side of his body and he has like a yep. giant arm. Yeah, I already feel like that. So thanks, John. I did a pretty big number on my back doing deadlifts at one point. Looking mm. too much weight and had bad form. I was usually pretty good and I'd pulled more weight before, but I hit it with the bad form at that one point and it was kind of the start of the end of my uh, fitness yeah, deadlift, days. Deadlifts can mess you up. Mm. I mean... I'm a little disturbed by the proliferation of the like up the butt leggings. Does that count? Is that a horror story? <laughs> and the weird like Ned, they have that weird like thing. Let's now, call it too. what it is. They look like a long butthole. I don't understand why people. Do you know what I'm talking about with like yeah, the, like the puckered uh, line? Like pleats. Yes. It's like a pleated yes. butt yes. crack yes. or something. Yeah. I don't yes. know. I've probably seen these. I'm sure, but I don't. Know. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand a lot of things I see. Why mess so. with the butt crack, John? It's perfect. Why try right? to change it? We don't need texture in a butt crack. We want it smooth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you guys, not, you're going to have to point something out to me this weekend when we see one. Because like, I'm not 100% sure I know what you're talking about. We're just going to walk through the the you know, convention you floor and I'll be life? like, how that butt, well, John, that how butt crack right there. How do you just life not knowing these things? <laughs> no, like, I'm sure I've seen. Don't but you like, exist you're talking in about, like, a pleated butt crack? I'm just like, I don't know. Guys. It's like the trend now with leggings. Yeah, it's like. I don't see that many leggings in my day to day. I think no, I, do, I see probably. a lot of leggings. But that's where I'm like, I probably this is all I'm seeing now. I just thought they were leggings. <laughs> so. uh, when I used to run a lot, I definitely more than once, like deep into a long run, where you're, I would drag my feet sometimes, and man, I hit some curbs and like just spilled many times. Oh, good lord, that's terrifying. Yeah. Okay. All right, last up, uh, the drummer from Foghat. I keep seeing stories of the ultra-wealthy building bunkers. How vast is Schnarz's bunker? Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm unfortunately a little ways to go before bunker territory. It's not a bunker. It's a country <laughs> country home. Yeah, I think the undergroundness of the bunker is the thing, you know, that, that makes yeah. it a bunker. So... That's the next uh, BGH meeting when we start digging out the basement of Schnarz's Yeah, home. It's exactly. Hey, guys, welcome <laughs> to the house. Here's your shovels. <laughs> Get going. <laughs> try, try not to hit the septic tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it for threads. Love Thanks, it. We man. just got three quick Instagram questions. Number one, this comes from Joe of the Suburbs, John. He would like to know what the room slash sleeping situation will be at Horror Hill Weekend. Uh, well, Casey is sleeping with his wife. Casey, uh, he is. No, I'm I mean, yeah. Um, and, yeah, uh, Casey will be there with his wife. They'll have a room. John and I will have a room. And Rachel, I assume you have your own room, right? Well, I was crashing with you guys. Is that? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's I mean, your funeral. I, I, listen. <laughs> Big spoon, little spoon, I do it all. <laughs> oh, all right. We won time. We won time. I was not the first convention we went to, but the one I always bring up was the night when, like, there were m maybe six of us in one room or something, and fully three people had CPAP machines, and I was like, I'm in fucking hell. <laughs> this is the worst night of my life. It, it, it was not a white, it was not a white no noise machine. I, like, no, were they, is it just because they were like out of noise. sync? It didn't bother me at all. <laughs> I, I like a white noise machine, so that's, you know, that's, yeah. yeah. Oh, good Lord. Um, what are you more excited for, Immaculate or Late Night with the Devil? Late Night with the Devil. I mean, Immaculate, well, late night looks with good. The devil. Immaculate looks good, but Late Night with the Devil looks really neat. Mm. Uh, what's his, I can't think of his first name, but da, uh, Das Malchian? Demal, blah, blah, blah. yeah. David Dalmatian. Das Malchian. I mean, he look, I'm excited for that. I'm pretty yeah. stoked. He looks great I, in the trailer. I haven't seen anything but the poster, so I'm going to just go in cold, but I, I'm excited. You guys got me excited for it. So. It has a cool, like, vibe, like aesthetic, 70s aesthetic vibe. Throwback. Like, I'm getting a yeah. little bit, like, ghost watchy from it, you know? I well, definitely got ghost watch, right? right? It's, it's... I think Rachel, so. you know yeah. how I feel about ghost watch. I do. <laughs> I do. I totally was playing the refs on that reference. <laughs> <laughs> I approve. <laughs> Last question tonight. It's a hard hitting one. Brian says, "What are your thoughts on Duncan renaming their small coffee to the Short King?" <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, this is the kind of representation I'd like to see in the world. Yeah, 
You know, it's about never time. All right, right, Chief. So, also, like, if you get coffee at Dunkin', the, the small is the way to go because that's when you get the paper cup. Like, otherwise, it's in the styrofoam. Other cup? Well, probably not in California, Rachel. I'm sure they don't have yeah, styrofoam. Yeah. I mean, I, oh. Dunkin's is a fairly new thing here. I have never really even had it. Yeah. I have been to the original oh. in Massachusetts. Oh. Still has the original. I feel like I may have been there too. Now that you say that, but it's out near near the beach. Yeah. <laughs> so cultured. I love it. Yes, I'm cultured because I've been to the first Dunkin' Donuts. Definitely. Well, I've been to the first Starbucks. Does that count? Okay, <laughs> that's cool. That's no, listen. That's cool. That's that cool is too. a West Coast versus East Coast version of that story, for sure. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Dunkin', Eric. That reminds me, uh, I, when we got to Salem, I was telling Colleen, we hadn't got it off the freeway as, it, within uh, Massachusetts, but I was telling Colleen, I'm kind of disappointed. I've only seen like one Dunkin' Donuts since we got into Massachusetts, and I'm like, I thought they were supposed to be all over here. It wasn't until the weekend, and I got off the freeway, and I was like in the suburbs. Every goddamn street corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it's yeah. not an exaggeration. And it's like that in New York, pretty much, too. Yeah. It's, I mean, I would say Duncan is more prevalent in New York, at least in Manhattan, than the Duncans. John, Manhattan is uh, not, the, not the real world, so you understand that, right? It's uh, in the Midwest. Oh, too. you're talking about New York State? Oh, sorry. I, that I have no. Yes, John, problem. there's an entire state outside yeah, of the know. island you live on. I mean, I know, like, you do. some of that, but. I'm genuinely concerned for how much yeah. you don't seem to know that. Yeah. All right. This weekend. We're going to be in Cincinnati. You can go to horrorhoundweekend.com. You can still make it if you're out in the Midwest or just feeling froggy and want to travel. There are still weekend passes available. At least, I don't know if that will be the case as of Friday. but Yeah, I believe yeah. Saturday. Come find out. Us also, if you're, out, on, but... um, if you're a patron and on Slack, it'll be easy to find us, but you can also DM us on Instagram. Don't hit me up on threads. I don't check threads unless I'm looking posting the questions every week. Um, you can hit me up on threads. I'm cinema.fromage on there, and I pay attention to it. So if you're on threads, feel free to reach out. But yeah, we'd like to meet people coming out, so hit us up. And please bring me snacks. Fibrous. Fibrous. Bananas, Bananas or apples? I'll take what you got. Okay. All right. Love it. Uh, Rachel, where can people find you? Well, if you want to slide into my DMs, you can do it a couple of different places. You can do it at ZG Podcasts, which is associated. You also get, we mostly get Ariel if you do that one. Or you can follow me personally at Rachie Pants. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rachel, what? the picture of the leggings you found is so good. <laughs> John, that's your, that is like the sauciest picture. John, what is it's your real, It's very saucy. It's hard to find a good one where you can actually see it because they're all on like ladies why would you ample want pleats in your butt crack like that i don't know no, no. i'm, I'm very vibes. familiar i'm familiar with the situation i didn't understand i wasn't understanding the pleats when you were just saying pleat but now I, yeah and i said like th this is an aggressive picture and uh, that rachel sent but you know i feel aggressed by them i feel <laughs> aggressed <laughs> where do you really land on them are you into them or is I mean, a... look, I'm, uh, yeah, it, you know, I'm, I'm fine. They're cool. I just, no, I mean, just I'm, feel I'm, like I'm it's like this is what my anus looks like in a linear fashion. Like it's just. <laughs> if they're posed Again, like that, a picture, I'm okay with it. Why mess with the butt crack? Is all. <laughs> oh my god. There you go, you guys. <laughs> you guys. All right, that's gonna do it for the show. <laughs> yeah, beat that. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And we're done. Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm wearing to horror hand. We that will is the not be. I bring to every party. We will <laughs> not be done. recording next week, but we'll be back the week after that. And we've got a bunch of theatrical stuff we're going to be catching up on for weeks. So get excited. Hope you enjoy the show, and we'll talk to you next week. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye.